You're listening to a Roddenberry podcast. It's time for another special guest on Daily Star Trek News, and today it's Gates McFadden, Dr. Crusher from Star Trek The Next Generation. She's got a new podcast out called Gates McFadden Investigates, so we'll talk about that. Plus a little about her work with David Bowie on the set of Labyrinth, and a little game that I like to call Merry Kiss or Miss. I'm Allison Pitt, and this is Daily Star Trek News. This show is supported by people like you on Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com forward slash Daily Star Trek News. So, Gates McFadden, thank you so much for joining me on Daily Star Trek News. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show and talk about your new podcast. Uh, welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, Allison. It's really a pleasure to be here. Oh, well, um, I, I, the pleasure is all mine. I don't know what else to say. Um, so <laughs> we're talking today because you have a new podcast coming out. Uh, it's called Gates McFadden Investigates, uh, and it's you talking to some of your friends about various topics. Uh, I wonder if you would give me a little bit of a rundown of uh, what the podcast is going to be like, the kind of people that you're talking to, um, what you're talking about. Oh, it's that kind of space family, you know, the kind of uh, wonderful, wonderful family that I have uh, made for, through all of these years of doing Star Trek and conventions and friendships. Uh, I'm starting off with uh, Jonathan and then my dear space son, we, we talk. And actually for him, we, we play, oh, he's remarkable. You know, that Will Wheaton is just like, really. He's my he's my dream boat. I love him. And he um, he and I had some very, very amazing things. We played games that I sort of created because I I wanted to break the ice some way and I didn't know quite how to do it. Yeah. And um, and it just was it was fantastic. He's so open and honest. And then we we had some hilarious things. And, uh, you know, we talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, I hope people aren't scandalized, but <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. And then, uh, I, I mean, Brent and Michael Dorn and Marina and Jonathan, as I said, uh, uh, Nana Visitor, uh, Picardo, Delancey, Michael Westmore, who is one of my dear friends. I mm. love him so much. And that was really a, a treat to just kind of reminisce with him and talk about things. And and there's, there's you know, more planned. Uh, I have, and Denise, I spoke with Denise. They're all such amazing people. Oh, I know mm. who I've forgotten is LeVar, who's just amazing. And I hope he gets the Jeopardy. I want him so much to do that. <laughs> He's so perfect, isn't he? Yeah, He's you so spoil it. I was going to ask you about that later if you plan oh, on watching I, it. <laughs> I Oh, are you kidding? Of course. He's my friend and he's so perfect for it. Yeah. I'm really excited. Uh, I actually, you know, Alec Trebek's son was in my son's class at school. Oh, really? When he was growing up. Yeah. So I'm, it's, it was, it's a wonderful family, the, the Trebek family. And, uh, you know, it was so sad uh, when he died. But I do think that uh, LeVar would carry that mantle very well. But anyway, so th these are my friends. And in the beginning, I think I was a little nervous. You know, you've done these. Yeah. I was sort of like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And then I, of course, researched everyone just like people research mm -hmm. me. I did all the same stuff. And I made way more questions than I could ever ask. But we would just start talking about things. And that was the best. And we laughed so hard. <laughs> Some of them, there is a lot of laughter. And on others, it's very serious. Yeah. It, it really depends. Yeah. Um, and some of them, I, I wasn't expecting this, but I, I learned how to sound edit, even though there's someone who then like double checks that I didn't leave something out or whatever. Right. But I mean, I take hours and hours editing this stuff and wow. it's been fun learning a new skill. Wait, so you edit, you edit the show yeah. yourself? Wow. Yeah, I do. Be, I mean, well, I say that I send my edited version. Let's say I have two hours, something of material. Mm -hmm. I send, uh, I spend hours and days editing it down, yeah. trying, you know, and, and with some people, and some people, I don't have that much. Some people they had to go or they were, we had a bad connection. So we didn't want to continue. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I turned a couple of them into two episodes because they were so wonderful. Yeah. And it, it took me a while to say, yeah, I think I, I don't want that to be cut out. That's something people should hear. So I decided to make some of those longer conversations into two episodes. And I, I mean, people I'm sure are going to tell me what they think, but <laughs> uh, I loved making everybody who was a friend of mine look good and sound good on the show. Mm -hmm. um, look good you're not going to see them but i would be on zoom with them or in person mm. they'd have a mask but they're so wonderful i think the hardest thing was listening to myself <laughs> welcome going, to being a podcaster <laughs> i mean i was like who is she will you just be quiet you know <laughs> i find that but, funny actually because you're a performer like you're a seasoned performer <laughs> in many many different media um is this the first time you've done something that's purely audio Yes, I think, well, no, that's not true, but I've been acting a part when I've been on audio. I've done narration, I've done read, play readings, I've done things like that. But this is the first time in this new format of being the host who has to keep the ball rolling. Right. And, you know, and, and it's a medium that I'm just, I'm learning. But I have to say, my friends were so generous with their time and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. What can I say? And I hope people enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed doing it. I was nervous in the beginning. I'm, I'm calming down, but you know, it, it, it kept me, kept me going during the uh, pandemic, to be honest. I was going to ask that because you're you're somebody who has um, worn a number of different performance hats, but they've always been um, sort of rooted in physical performance. Either you've been on the television or dancing, choreography, um, and then there's podcasting, which is a lot of sitting behind a microphone <laughs> and, and not a lot, and not an awful lot of um, um, you know the physical aspect of it. So, uh, what a, what was it about the podcast? Why was now the right time for you to create a podcast? Well, the interesting thing is, is that I did not come up with the idea. Um, I, it was Brian Volk Weiss, who is the CEO of Nacelle, who is absolutely wonderful. I cannot, I wish I'd had bosses like him my whole life. He is just so down to earth, so present. There's no formality. There's no like, I'm your boss listen to what I say. He's just like so interesting and funny and charming. And he's the one who called me out of the blue and said, introduced himself and said, I, I am interested in producing you doing a podcast. Mm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, and it, it took, it took uh, quite a bit of convincing because I was like, you know, what do you want? Oh, but look, I mean, to hear you guys talk about Star Trek and I said, okay, hold it. There is no way. I am going to do a podcast about Star Trek episodes with my friends. They would like not ever do it with me because we talk about it so much yeah. with other people. And so I said, no, no, I can't do it. And then he came back and he came back for like, you know, a couple times. And I, I thought, okay, I was getting a little jinx because the only other time someone had come back to me when I turned something down twice was for the original Star Trek. <laughs> and I, that changed my life yeah. and i just and i sort of went gates what is your problem girl <laughs> can you i mean how often do you get offered something yeah. that they will produce and say yes so i i mean i've told the story but it is such a funny story and it is the absolute truth i was just on the verge and i'm like i don't know i mean you know i've never done this and ah, whatever and i went over to um i have two friends, we were on the porch, social distance with our masks on, and they had this adorable dog, Luna, who was so shy and terrorized that it would, you know, she would only be with them and mm -hmm. wouldn't let me touch her. And she, I finally said, okay, let's have Luna decide if, and I took two dog biscuits and I put one in my left hand. She had never let me touch her. Right. One in my left hand and one in my right hand. And I said, if it's the left hand, I'm doing the podcast. If it's the right hand, I'm not. Right. And that dog, I'm not kidding you. We were laughing so hard because the dog took about 10 minutes to decide. <laughs> the dog the dog was like going to the left, then it went to the right. And then coming in on the right, then back to the left, then oh, back to the right, then starting back at zero. Finally took it from the left. And I went, well, 
Luna dared me to do it. I got to do this podcast. And that's the true story. <laughs> and then I called Brian that night and said, okay, I'm doing it. I don't know, you know. So that's how it happened. Yeah. And I think it was perfect timing because I was alone and I had had COVID for three weeks. I was really sick. And I just thought this will keep me with a new project. I'll learn something new, which I love doing. Yeah. And I'll let it evolve. I can't control it. It's just let's go for it and see what happens. And it'll either work or it won't. So that's where I am. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful story. Uh, I love that you. I love that you said yes. It's great. Um, so I mentioned that. Well, and you know, you you do a lot of different types of performance, and you have done over the years. Um, I remember when I found out that you choreographed Labyrinth. <laughs> My head like exploded because I grew up on Labyrinth. I'm uh, I'm gonna be a cheese ball here. I literally have a statue of David <gasps> Bowie. Jared, oh my god, Jared on oh. my desk. Yeah. Um That's so cool. <laughs> I love it. I want a statue of David Bowie on my desk. I can't even remember where I got it, but I love that thing. Um He was he was amazing in it. I mean, truly amazing. Iconic. He wrote all that music. Yeah. And you know what? He there's no one else who could have walked on stage with all of the hair and makeup and those heels that he had on. Yeah. And he was like, totally chill. Yeah. I mean, really, I, I think I was, I, yeah, he's a very, he was a very impressive human being and obviously an extraordinary artist. Uh, his last album, uh, was just extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think th it, I, enough cannot be said about how, yeah, to everything about him and particularly that role was incredible um i was actually uh before we started chatting i was uh looking at an old behind the scenes video of you choreographing the um the ball scene the ballroom scene yeah which as as a mm -hmm. i can't remember how old i was when that came out but that to me is like still it um it sticks in my mind as just like a perfect distillation of everything about that everything that that movie was and um watching you kind of make that happen was magical uh well you know there were obviously there's so many people involved in something like that but we were quite a few months into it that was one of the later scenes mm -hmm. and i had been you know i'd been working with hoggle and ludo and and the goblins and all of that but when we finally got to that it was sort of like, oh, I know how to do this. This is <laughs> this is what I'm used to. You know, I'm working with people who are dancing. And it was it was so wonderful. Like he let me cast the people who were gonna be my dancers. Mm -hmm. And I knew they were gonna wear masks and I and I had trained with masks and uh so it, it was really cool, um, the whole thing. And I I don't think I quite understood everything uh that i needed to know about film at the time so i was doing it more as if it was on stage but then i started to get into okay i'm gonna have to change that and mm -hmm. it has to end here but i was by myself for several weeks just you know working with them getting that ready and then i'd run to do another thing but it wasn't until they all pulled up with the cameras and everything and it and then put the masks and costumes and it really was a stunning scene it was so beautiful how how, how did it I mean, I'm asking you to cast your mind back for for many years, but ha um, you were asking David Bowie uh, to, to move to in the way that yep. you wanted him to move. And that's right. Um, and how old were you at the time, roughly? Well, I was in my 30s. I mean, I I felt a lot of pressure during that because it was just one of those things. But yeah, sadly, I was the one who had to take his arms and show him some of the waltz moves. Oh, and, you man. know, Yeah, I know it was tough. It was tough standing in for Jennifer. And, and I'm like, no, I want to do it again, Jennifer. You just stand back. No, no. And she was this uh, amazing 14 year old. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing yeah. you have to understand. But for me, I had taken that movie because I was supposed to play her mother. Oh, really? And you yeah, did not play her mother? British equity wouldn't let me play her mother. Oh, interesting. That's why I said yes. I was all the way over there. They tried and tried and tried, and they were turned down. And because I took the job because I had had an accident, a skiing accident, and I had lost a Woody Allen movie, which I'd been cast in and had costumes fittings for. 
I lost uh, two other things and it was a really tough time. So Labyrinth came along and I thought, okay, well I can play the part and then I'll do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. but it was, it was really, uh, I was, I was learning on the fly and so many of the things yeah. I had done masks. I had, you know, I knew a little bit about puppets, mm -hmm. but, um, and I had worked with little people and, and uh, uh, um, some incredible dwarfs on uh, the movie he had me work on. It took a week for me to do the sequences, which was called Dream Child, mm -hmm. a beautiful movie directed by Gavin Miller with Ian Holm and Jane Asher about an 80-year-old Alice in Wonderland. And wow. she's going back to accept some award about Lewis Carroll and everything. And she starts to remember some of the not so good parts of it. Mm -hmm. And these creatures were extraordinary, but it was really state of the art at the time. There would be seven people working the Mad Hatter's face. Like it would, you know, wow. and then I'd have a dwarf wearing it who was pretty much blind and <laughs> holding hand, you know, it, it, there were so many things involved. Yeah. And mechanisms like that could break very easily. You have a voice actor on set doing the voice and you have the live actor, you know, it yeah. was involved. So, yeah. And I think that was my trial by fire that Jim had, you know, he, cause he just left me. He went off. He said, this is what I want you to do. And, um, I guess I proved myself on that. And then labyrinth happened yeah. uh, right after that. Yeah. What a, what a wonderful uh, film to be a part of. That's wonderful. So I want to uh, take you back to uh, the podcast uh, for a minute. Uh, I listened yeah. to the mm -hmm. segment that um, that your team sent me uh, that you did with Will Wheaton. So the beginning of <laughs> you guys did Never Have I Ever, which sounds wonderful. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if you're game, I would like to play a little podcast game with you. Um, OK, so. Um, and you and you can you can play this in uh, your capacity as as either Gates or uh, in character as Dr. Crusher, although for legal reasons, you may want to choose Dr. Crusher. Um, have you heard of the game Mary Kiss or Miss? No, explain it to okay, me. Okay, so the, the, the concept of the game is that uh, you're given three people and you have to choose one to marry, uh, so long term, one to kiss, which is just like a, a, a brief dalliance, uh, and then one to miss entirely. So they just go away and you don't get any interaction with them whatsoever. Wow, wow, okay. So I would like to do this with you and I would like to have you choose, marry, kiss <laughs> or miss, uh, three of your crewmates. So this is in universe <laughs> with Dr. Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Oh my, this is gonna be, why, wait a minute, so I'm Dr. Crusher, I'm not Gates McFadden. Uh, you can be either one, but I think, you know, just to avoid any um, any awkwardness, you should you should do it as Dr. You, Crusher. It, no, they're both gonna be awkward, okay? <laughs> Let, There's a possibility. What are you talking about? There's no. a possibility, okay. No, they're both gonna be awkward. Okay, All right. uh, so Mary Kiss or Miss, you've got uh, Captain Picard, uh, who obviously you had, had some history with. Um, Commander Riker, who you also had some history with when he was hosting a, a trill. <laughs> um, and uh, to throw it in there and to make it equal, uh, Counselor Troy, <laughs> who I believe you never had a, a relationship with on screen, but was that uh, you guys had a very close, <laughs> you know, personal friendship. Yeah. Um, wow, that's tough. Okay, so, well, I would say... Uh, So what is it? What is it again? It's it's what's the, it's kiss or miss or what's the first one? Uh, Mary kiss. Oh, Mary. Or miss. So it's like one's a long term. You'd be with them forever. One is kiss. So just have a brief fling, and then one of them you just you don't have a relationship with at all. At all. Uh, and we can't include spot in this. Uh, uh, no, I think that they <laughs> they could have like you know a, an ancillary role to the story, but like you have to you have to choose. <laughs> Well, I would say, I mean, for for Doctor Crusher, I would say absolutely, Mary would be would be uh, Picard, uh, Dalliance would be Riker, and and I, I, you know, I'll just be on phone phone calls with with Troy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I won't tell you who I would choose. Um, why, why not? Why not? <laughs> I mean, I, I would say, you know, obviously, I have more similarities in life to Jonathan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but uh, 
but I think Patrick, in, in terms of chemistry for Dr. Crusher and stuff, I think there was definitely a uh, good chemistry between Crusher and Picard. Yeah. Um, and so the other, uh, you know, but you didn't answer, you didn't answer who you would do. Would you do, okay. well, you're going for Troy. You're going for Troy, right? Uh, I think I would marry Troy. Yeah. And wow. Um, and I would, you, you would have no privacy. You understand that. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with that. She would know what you're thinking before you say it. All right. Yeah, I okay. think I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right. I mean, if Good. we were, you know, okay. we went into that as, with that with that understanding, I think that would be kind of wonderful, actually. Um, uh, ooh, okay. I, I would definitely have a fling with um, with Riker, and Miss um, Picard. Yeah. See, I yeah. like him and I respect him a lot, but he's a very, very serious man. Well. I guess it's hard because I also know Patrick, who is one of the silliest, can be so silly. So, right. yeah, yeah, it's hard to not bleed the other into whatever. Yeah, so it's yeah. tricky. Um, so this is a Star Trek podcast. I have to ask you the Star Trek question. Are we going to see Dr. Crusher on Star Trek Lower Decks? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I know that was a trick question because obviously I know. <laughs> I know you can't say and I know that uh, you know yeah. you're constantly being asked the question of um are yeah, you going to be on Picard, Picard and I you know that you got to ask Patrick he's the one who's going to decide I'm sure yeah you know uh so it would be great it would be fun but who knows are you aware of the hashtag Picard needs Bev there's a whole huge movement of of women on the internet uh trying to get a, a campaign uh to get oh, to get the two characters back together it's well kind of I have definitely seen some of this stuff it is wonderful it listen we have the greatest fans oh my gosh I I have to say I I'm just so grateful for the humor and the caring of our fans male and female whatever uh, they really are smart and care about just the future and life on this planet. And uh, yeah, no, it's a it's a great group of people. Yeah. So I'm I'm thrilled that they're saying that instead of don't ever let her come on. I mean, heavens. <laughs> uh, yeah, that wouldn't be very nice, would it? No, that would not be nice. No, good. Um, I'd be in my room crying. <laughs> um, so talking um, still about the podcast and um, it's coming out soon if it's not out already. Um, no, it's on May 11th. May, May 11th. May 11th. Okay. Um, now, I don't want you to spoil it. You've already talked about the people that you're going to have on the show. Um, f for people who will be listening, uh, one of which will be me, I'm getting my COVID vaccine, my second one that week. Oh, so I will be. Congratulations. Thank you. I will be laid up in bed listening to your. Podcast. Now, wait. But if you get sick, don't blame it on me, okay? No, 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 no. All right. No. Okay. I'll All be right. using you to heal. <laughs> okay, good afterwards um <laughs> what's a moment that's coming up in this because it's a limited series right are you going to do seasons well, or is it going to be on i i think i'm going to do i think i want to do it in seasons in a way but it depends i've got 14 in the can now i have other people i've talked to who i still am going to you know i i could go on it just i need some breaks because i'm you know it's a new thing and you really are in a sound studio i'll see how you know let's see how how it goes maybe you know one will like it maybe they'll like it let's let's see what happens okay uh, so um the question is what um what's a moment that's coming up in in this in this series in this season um that you're really really excited for people to hear well i am excited to hear will wheaton talk about his relationship with his wife and different things like that and his family. I think that's a very, he's so honest and, and loving. I think it's really, that's lovely. Um, I think uh, Michael Dorn has some incredible stories uh, from his youth that are both funny. And then some of them are about his encounters with police. Mm -hmm. um, LeVar and I, well, LeVar is so quick, like he and I start off and it's one of the clips that I think they sent some of you folks. He was so much fun to have on and uh, he's so articulate. Mm -hmm. Brent and I, I, I was laughing so hard <laughs> at this moment that happened with Brent that I actually, I kept laughing for the whole next day. Yeah. It was so funny. And, you know, Marina, we didn't have as good of like this, the the connection, the internet, it was something really bad, but it was really fun, but it was, it was hard. You know, we were having a delay. Yeah. Uh, 
but obviously she's extremely funny. There, there, you know, I kept learning about these people and these are people I talk to all the time. You know, I talked to Delancey, you know, he's been over my house. I mean, I, you know, I know these people and I, I could always talk to them because they're such interesting people. They're funny, they're smart. Um, they have very interesting lives. And so I don't think there's one person actually that I go to. I would get very immersed in the person I was editing mm -hmm. and you really start to love them. I'm sure you, you, you know, have experiences and you just start to go, yeah. wow, they are just really awesome. You get and, to relive uh, that conversation. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is wonderful. Um, it's quite a, quite an amazing group of actors actually and human beings they're not just uh performers they're really wonderful friends so i'm privileged in that way and i i i hope that people can feel the friendship between us yeah well that's great so the podcast is called gates mcfadden investigates who do you think you are and that's going to be available on all the major platforms um may 11th you said that's right right may 11th so Great. Uh, and it, that's coming out weekly, is it? I believe that's how they're doing it. Uh, you know, I've, that's not what I got involved in. Oh, right. <laughs> Fine. That, that's the production company, yeah. but uh, I believe that's it. And it's really fun because I had my son wrote the, the, the themes music, which is oh, hilarious really? to me. Cool. Well, he didn't even write it deliberately. First, I had asked him to write something and he did this thing that was very, very good. And I was going to use that. And then he was doing this project for schools in Kentucky. He's a he's a violinist and a composer mm -hmm. and he's in the Louisville Orchestra. So he was doing this little project for the community and I heard it and I went, oh no, oh no, no, that's what my podcast, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. And so I love this silly theme. It's perfect. So uh, he was kind enough to write something else for the educational department in <laughs> Louisville and you'll laugh. It's a, it's it, something simple, you know, but on handmade instruments and stuff, but I, it really was the way I felt yeah. about my podcast. So let me know what you think. Yeah. Wow. It sounds like it's really got your personality stamped all over it, which is, <laughs> which is great to hear, which is great to hear. Well, it could be good or bad. Let's you know, the jury's out on that, but, uh, hopefully, hopefully. I will keep getting better, more skills. <laughs> right, right. So people can subscribe now. You can go in um, and turn on your notifications mm -hmm. so you know when a, a new episode drops. And I'm really looking forward to listening to Gates McFadden Investigates. Uh, You're sweet. Gates, thank you so much for joining me on Daily Star Trek News. It was really wonderful conversation and I appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, my pleasure, Elton. You take care. Bye-bye. This is a Roddenberry Podcast. For more great podcasts, visit podcast.rottenberry.com.